think lightly of his command to love one another. I just can't think lightly of these because he will despise me. What a challenge that is for me. But what a hope too that I find in this very passage. God also says to Eli that those who honour me, I will honour. If I honour God, he will honour me. I mean, what an encouragement and, and, and what a hope And so this series is about how we can honour our God. It's one of the values that we have here in the life of this church. Three weeks ago, Tony Woods commenced this series about speaking, about how we can honour God through serving one another. Two weeks ago, we spoke about honouring God by learning to respect one another. Last week, it was about generosity, Proverbs 3 Verse 9 says, Honour the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. How did you go during the week? Did you think about how you can honour God with your wealth? Or did you just let it pass? This week it's all about honouring God by being in His holy presence. This is such an interesting spiritual discipline that I'm not sure how many people really intentionally try to do because we just get so busy. So many priorities just cram into our way. But when we intentionally spend time with God in His presence, He honours us. The Bible teaches that God is omnipresent, meaning that God is everywhere. And in reverent awe, King David realised this when he wrote, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I go from your presence? In all of creation, there is no hiding place from the Lord. Through His Spirit, God reaches. God's reach extends to every corner of the universe, but also into the hearts of those who trust Him. In the Old Testament, God's presence is directly associated with the tabernacle in the wilderness or God's presence can be found in the temple in Jerusalem so that when God speaks about entering into his presence people came with the sense that they would come near to his presence where he had appointed his name especially to to dwell in those in those places in the new testament All people, all people were invited to come into the very presence of God. Have a look at this passage from Ephesians 3 verse 12. And Paul says, Because of Christ and our faith in Him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. Paul is inviting us to come into the presence of God. Now we need to appreciate that for many of Paul's readers at the church at Ephesus, this was a new concept. No ordinary person could do this. God was was seen way up there, kind of aloof from our human pain and, and hurt at the time. Now they were being told that God actually wants us to come into his presence. This whole concept of everyday people coming into the presence of God was changed, as verse 12 puts it, because of Christ. Because of Christ. If we blink, we kind of just miss this phrase, because of Christ. Yet it has such a powerful meaning for us today. Because of Christ. Because of Christ and what He has done for us on the cross, we have been forgiven. We have been redeemed. We are now justified. And because of what Christ did on the cross, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. Praise God for what His Son has done for us on the cross. Interestingly, Paul wrote... Another phrase which is important when coming into the presence of God. He says, because of 
Christ and our faith in Him. Our faith in Him. This is an important phrase for the Apostle Paul. In Romans, for example, Paul says in in Romans 5 verse 1 that we have been made right in God's sight by faith. By putting our faith in Christ, we are told that we become a child of God, one of His sons, one of His daughters. Also, we learn from the New Testament teaching that having faith or trust in Christ goes a long way into experiencing the blessings of God. And the apostles knew this. When Jesus told them that they needed to forgive, they knew this was at times going to be so hard. And I think a lot of us can relate to that. Forgiving somebody that's really hurt us, it's just so hard. And so they asked Jesus a good and genuine question in Luke 17 verse 5 when they said, show us how to increase our faith. They wanted the faith necessary for such radical forgiveness. We need such faith for such radical forgiveness. But Jesus didn't directly answer their question because the amount of faith is not as important as its genuineness. It was not a question of getting more faith, but of using the faith that they have, that we have. And so they could have faith as small as a mustard seed and still see some amazing things. Because of what Christ has done on the cross and by just having a a bit of faith, Paul says in verse 12, we can now come boldly and confidently into the presence of God. God. I wonder if you've ever been in the presence of royalty or somebody famous. I mean, how were you? Was your heart sort of pumping away? (laughs) Or did you think later, why did I ever say that for? Back a couple of months ago, Liesl's side of the family gathered together for my father-in-law's 80th birthday celebration. It was just a great time of gathering the family at the uh, Blue Mountains west of Sydney. And there was a video of Graham over the 80 years. And in it was a segment when he actually met Queen Elizabeth. It was broadcast at the time around Australia. He was the president of Churches of Christ and the heads of churches were there to meet Queen Elizabeth. But none of the eight grandchildren remembered or knew of the time that my father-in-law Graham met the Queen And all of them are all in their 20s now. Afterwards, they were asking Pa all these questions. What was it like? How did it go? And and they were just amazed that their grandfather met the Queen. You know, one of the people I look up to as a young minister that I looked up to 30 years ago, he was a minister, he wasn't any royalty, he wasn't famous But to me, I admired him and one day I just wanted to be like him. He was just an everyday pastor with whom God was using powerfully to bring many, many people to the Lord Jesus. His name is Barry McMurtry. And as a young pastor, I would attend his lectures and and his conferences and was just inspired by his teaching. Listening to Barry just inspired me as a young pastor to keep on growing but I would never go up to him why would someone so successful as him would have anything to do with little old me a few years later I was actually bold enough to ask Barry who was pastor of the church down in Wollongong of over a thousand people would he preach at my little church, Epping Church of Christ? And when I rung Barry, he said, of course I know you, Dave, and I'm my, your ministry at Epping. I nearly just dropped the phone. Not only did he know me, but he accepted my invitation to come and speak at my, at my church. Well, a few years later, Barry went to serve as senior pastor of a large church of 5,000 people in LA. And I went and visited his church and other large churches. Again, to my surprise, I nervously went up to him 
And again, to my surprise, Barry remembered me and even asked how my new church in Melbourne was going. And I thought, he even knows that I was in, I was in, I'm in Melbourne. More years went by, I commenced at my Canberra church and Barry had retired here, just at Southport. And my then church board encouraged me to go and find a mentor. And the first person I thought of was this Barry McMurchie. But immediately I thought, why would he want to mentor me? After building up a, enough courage to go and ring Barry, he was just so glad that I had asked him. And over the past few years, either by face-to-face -face or via email, we've enjoyed each other's company, talking about the, the joys and the complexities of ministry. And I'm still inspired by being with him. The man whom I feared not wanting much to do with me he invited me just a couple of years ago to preach at his Baptist church in Glen Ennis. If coming into the presence of people that we admire inspires us, then how much more coming into the presence of God will it inspire us with hope and peace and courage and, and faith. But the issue that a number of us have to overcome is why was such a big God who created the whole universe would have to have anything to do with little us? And Paul teaches and teaches that God went to extraordinary lengths to bring us into his presence by sending Jesus. But now, with our fears and with our anxieties and with our challenges, we are told to come boldly and confidently into God's presence. It is in His presence that we experience peace that transcends all of our understanding. Hope that renews our strength, faith that surfaces into action and love that can never separate us from God. About the presence of God, the well-known author, speaker, theologian, John Piper quotes two passages. One was from Psalm 100 verse 2 where it says, Serve the Lord with gladness, come into his presence with singing. Or James 4, verse 8, where it says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. And then Piper says that these are invitations. These are invitations into the fuller, more intense, more certain, more joyful, more satisfying, more transforming experiences of the reality of our God. And they are, they are invitations. You are invited to come into the very presence of God. And this honours Him. During the week, Lisa and I um, attended the annual national conference for Baptist senior pastors. This year it was held in Brisbane and it was held at the River Life Baptist Church some of you may know it as the Kenmore Baptist Church. It was another wonderful conference of pastors sharing their joys and their challenges, as well as professional development um, as well. For the first 20 years of my ministry, Liesl hasn't been able to come along to these conferences and other conferences because, she, well, she was looking after the kids. But we entered into a new season for the past 10 years. She's been able to come with us, which is great because we've been able to talk about some of the inspirational talks that we uh, enjoyed together, but also saying wasn't that boring as well. Anyway, on Thursday, on Thursday, just before morning tea was the second last session of our few days conference. It commenced with a lovely time of worship and then the last speaker got up to share a bit about his ministry and about his life. His first point, Lisa and I said, oh, well, that was really relevant to, to us. That was good. And then his second point, oh, yeah, that was really good. That was a really good uh, point. And then came his next point. He shared something quite personal and boom, did it hit Lisa and I straight into our hearts. Morning tea was 
next. And Lisa said that she was going to go up and speak to, uh, to his wife. And she said to me, and Liesl said to me that I should go and speak to um, the pastor. I thought to myself, I'm okay. I don't need to speak to him. After morning tea, we came back into our conference room. Liesl said that it was really good catching up with, uh, with the wife. And uh, how did you go catching up with the pastor? And I said, oh, yeah. And she goes, you didn't talk to him, did you? I said, no. Typical, she says. Anyway, the final session of the conference commenced with worship. It was a beautiful time of worship and prayer time. It was a lovely, gentle time of worship, and I really felt that I was coming into, you know, the presence of God. I can't always say that, but this time I just felt like I was coming into the presence of God and just worshipping for who He is and all that, that He has done. And generally they moved into a time of prayer. And the way that they did this was that they encouraged the, uh, their church prayer intercessors just to go up to the different pastors, whether individually or, or, or as a couple, just lay hands on them, just started to pray. And, and the person came up and prayed for me. And what she prayed for me was just, was just uh, beautiful. And then she uh, moved on and I just continued with uh, the worship. But then it happened. <laughs> that pastor, they were only just in over there, and his wife left their seats and were heading our way. And I thought, oh no, they're coming towards us. And then they walked past us only to come right behind us and started to lay their hands on us and started to pray for us. And I thought to myself, I kept thinking to myself, come on, David, keep it together, keep it together. And I did for five seconds into the pastor's and his wife's prayer. And all this emotional stuff happened. But it was God. And I was coming into his presence, just honouring him. And he begins to honour Liesl and me. It was such a beautiful experience being ministered to by God and by our now new friends. How can you honour God by being in his presence? A few weeks ago, Tony spoke from the Mary and Martha passage in Luke chapter 10, where Martha was just so busy preparing for their guest, Jesus, while Mary sat at the feet of Christ. Now, quite, and Tony quite rightly pointed out that if we, that in order to honour God, we need to, to do both, sit at the feet of Jesus and also serving Jesus. But that's the thing. Many of us are geared up in terms of being busy serving. That it leaves little time to sit in the presence of God. And Cindy McMurdin is a national speaker and author of several books that have helped people develop their intimacy with God. And she listed seven things I want to share with you that help you get into the presence of God. You might want to write these down. One, come clean with God. Sometimes you can't sense God's presence because there is something. There is something blocking the communication between the two of you. He hasn't left, but your sensitivity into his presence might be affected by some unconfessed sin in your life. And King David realized this when he said, when I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted it away and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgave me and all my guilt is gone. If you feel God isn't around because the two of you haven't talked for a little while or because you've avoided the thought of him for so long, or you haven't thought of him for such a long time. Confess to God what's on your heart and mind and ask him to give you an ear to hear 
his voice again. When your fellowship with him is restored, the communication flows. So get clean through the forgiveness of Christ and just let it fly. Two, read scripture out loud. When you audibly speak God's inspired word, you will sense its power and his presence. The Bible says that God's word is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. That sharp sword will either make you aware of its weight or cut your heart through conviction or inspiration or determination. A cut heart is better than a dull heart. Three, sing to God. It says in the King James that God inhabits the praises of his people. In Psalm 22, verse 3. Ever wonder why you sometimes feel closer to God when you are listening and, and singing Christian songs, whether they're old or new or whatever? Could it be that where worship tends to take place? When you start praising him, regardless of where you are, you'll sense his presence. Probably because you are no longer focused on yourself, but on our majestic God. When we open the doors of our hearts to love him, he will meet us right there. YouTube, Spotify, they all have great worship, new and old. Four, say God's name and call upon him. People around you may be using God's name in vain, but scripture says, there is power in the name of Jesus because it says salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which you must be saved, says Peter in Acts 4 verse 12. Say his name out loud as the answer to all you seek, as the source to calm your soul as the one whose presence you long for and you will sense the power of his presence and his beautiful peace. Five, say a, a breath prayer for his presence to take over. There are times we need him, but we just don't know what to say or, or where to start. Start by just saying his name, Jesus, Jesus. And then just start speaking your heart's cry. For me, it's often is Jesus. I'm sorry. Hear me. I believe the simplest of cries are the ones that penetrate his heart and our hearts. Six. I'm a big believer of this one. Take a walk in his creation. Exercise brings your body, mind and heart to life. Feel spiritually dead. Get outside. Move around. Confess to him what's on your heart. And let him waken you up spiritually. I love walking in nature with my little dog, Bosley. And I just speak. I could be having my headphones in, singing songs to God, so I'll take them out and just, just pray. I feel his presence in nature. In seven, breathe deeply. Sometimes we can't sense God's presence because there's just too much going on. Too much noise, too much traffic, too much confusion, too much in, in our heads. Center your mind on him. And start to breathe deeply. Try it. Exhale the distracting thoughts. 
inhale a desire to sense His presence. Exhale your preoccupation with, with self. Inhale a desire to know Him more completely. Exhale the worries of the moment and inhale His peace. You can begin to sense that you're in His holy presence. There's a reason. His word says, be still and know that I am God. When we intentionally come into his presence, God is honoured. And when he is honoured, you will be honoured. Is it any wonder that the famous author of the five love languages also written that one of the God's love languages is time. One of God's love languages is time. Spending time in his presence. I'm sure for many, it's time to come into his presence and experience his amazing love.